Obstetric fistula. Obstetric fistula occurs disproportionately among impoverished girls and women, especially those living far from medical services. Without treatment, fistula often leads to social, physical, and emotional deterioration, but also it can lead to chronic medical problems, including kidney disease and nerve damage in the legs. Ne <laughs> We have a saying in Africa that the sun should not rise twice in a woman who is in labor. Sawa mnane zeshiro. Zali mukaga nebantu wala echigoro vya kundua lilo. Nebu <laughs> Okay, most, in most cases, the mothers that uh, come to the hospital, those who end up with problems, eh, come at a late time. Because for us, we consider the three Ds, eh, which is delay in the community, delay uh, on the way, and delay in the hospital. The grief of losing a child and becoming disabled exacerbates the pain. The injury also leaves many women with few opportunities to earn a living despite showing extraordinary courage and resilience in the face of this challenge. And the biggest chunk of fissures we are seeing as a result of obstructed labor. When the baby's head or the part which is presenting causes pressure on both the bladder and the the woman's uh, vagina and when that obstructed labor is not relieved in time it causes uh, it cuts off the blood supply of that part and then it falls off and then women begin leaking urine victims of obstetric fistula are usually among the hardest to reach and are often illiterate and with limited access to health services including maternal and reproductive health care these women have had difficult deliveries, they've had dead babies, they've been ripped open There's, uh, because of the babies being too big for their pelvis. They've been a long time in labor with no help and they have holes in their blood. They're leaking urine all the time and some of them, about 5% of them are leaking stool as well. And they, they re remain, some of them even with damage to the nerves of their legs so that they have paralysis or foot drop. Of their, of their one foot or maybe even both feet if it has been a very long labor. Fistula is one of the most devastating injury that a woman can live. It is a very desperate situation since she is, after having fistula, she is totally rejected by the society. And yet she was meant to give birth. And this is a, an intolerable situation. It is a, one of the most injustice you can find while giving birth.
Over the last 10 years, UNFPA has directly supported more than 2,000 women and girls to receive surgical treatment for fistula, roughly one-third of all women who needed repair, including 500 women and girls in 2012 alone. By working to prevent fistula, UNFPA, Ministry of Health and Partners organized surgical camps in all the regional referral hospitals to mark the first ever international date and obstetric fistula. The camps have been succe very successful. We have received more patients than we had expected. Prior to this, we didn't know that there were so many fistula patients in this region. And uh, in fact, in the beginning, some patients even missed. And in between there, we have even had to ship patients to Kagando. So the camps are very successful. We get many patients and the surgeons are very good. So we get good results. Yeah. Fistula is still a, a burden in this region. The May 23rd surgical camps were climaxed with other events aimed at raising awareness of this neglected health and human rights challenge. I think UNFP has been globally championing together with the partners in Fistula campaign, championing that all issues that Fistula could actually be eradicated if we work together as a group. And our intention is to work and push for this agenda. Remember Fistula in most societies or in many settings are treated, or the victims of Fistula are treated with some dejection and rejection. And you also realize that uh, the whole discussion on Fistula has not been that open. So we hope with commemoration, the first Fistula in International Fistula Day, we we'll start opening up the dialogue and conversation on Fistula. We we'll start mobilizing action of partners on issues of Fistula. And we we'll start making the subject of Fistula difficult but open for conversation and dialogue on. And then see that it afflicts one of us and therefore it is us to take the action in addressing such a case. So the commemoration of the International Fiscal Day would be to me a starting point in bringing up to the open, to the fore, a subject that was possibly not discussed and not known by many. But that afflicts 2.6% of our population. The stigma associated with fistula keeps many women hidden away. Some go into deep physical and emotional decline, and others may resort to suicide. In spite of this challenge, UNFPA continues to be a powerful advocate for women, mobilizing support for their rights and reproductive health. Now, who gets fistula would therefore be important who is at higher risk? Of course, anybody could get it, but who is at higher risk? Especially those that are not induced by maybe a procedural mistake during the process of uh, surgery or anything. So you find that uh, many of the cases of fistula largely come from, one, younger women, because they hadn't matured well enough, the pelvis are small, and therefore the process of giving birth, there's an obstruction. Yes. Many victims of obstetric fistula are teenage girls. Teenage pregnancies are risky, and the younger the girl, the higher the risk. Many of those who survive days of obstructed labor end up with fistula. They say that all the pregnancy because fistula. When, when, you start, when you get pregnant, when you're still young at the early age, you get fistula because your stomach is not yet much what to carry a baby inside. So you are expected to get many diseases. And if they delay to take you to the, the hospital, that thing will happen to you. The disparities in incidence of fistula and other childbirth-related injuries continue to exist despite government's efforts to reduce the numbers. Given these disparities, maternal health is a matter of human rights as well as public health concern. Yes, it's not, it's not good 
that we still have women dying at this material time of the century. In the developed world, I think it's almost history. For us, we have about 6,000 women dying every year. Women dying during pregnancy, during labor, and after birth. And out of those, still we have about, for every woman who dies, we have about 15 to 30 women who get disabilities, who get complications. Now, we are looking at one woman who is dying, but many, many more women actually are getting complications. Like maternal mortality, fistula can be entirely preventable. Yet, it is estimated that at least 200,000 women aged between 15 to 49 years are living with the condition, with about 1,900 new cases occurring each year. We say yes, we are developing in Uganda, but maybe we are yet to develop because the evidence that we see, we are still living with stone edge diseases like the fistula. So when we stop developing fistulae, I think we should use that as a yardstick to say, yes, indeed, we are developing. But if there are fistulae, then our development is fragmented. Just what I'm holding. Besides supporting periodic fistula repair camps, UNFPA has procured fistula repair equipment for both public and private not-for-profit hospitals that provide fistula repair services. As a result, 13 hospitals across the country have the skills and equipment to repair fistula on a routine basis. We have been able to procure theater equipment for hospitals and health center for in consultation with Ministry of Health, as well as procure delivery sets and delivery kits, and even hospital beds for mothers and mattresses. We have equipped 100% of all hospitals in the eight districts we work in, 100% of health center fours in the eight districts we work in, 100% of health center threes in the eight districts we work in. Again, to make sure that the equipment essential for proper care are provided. One such hospital that has benefited from fistula repair equipment is Chitova Mission Hospital. Located on the hills of Masaka, Chitovo Hospital, a private, not-for-profit mission health facility, has been offering fistula repair services since 1993. Every year, with support from donors like UNFPA and Gender Health, Chitovo Hospital holds fistula camps where affected women are repaired. The first training repair camp in Uganda was held here at, in, in, in Kitovo, I think even the first in East Africa, was held here in Kitovo in 2000, November 2004. And with the help of Engender Health and UNFPA. We had a contract at that stage, Engender Health were paying for the repair and the training. While as UNFPA were committed to help us with equipment and supplies. And that's how it all began. Furthermore, UNFPA, alongside partner agencies like Engender Health, continue to support interested surgeons in the country to gain international competent skills in the repair of fistula. I think repairing is what I would call mopping the floor. What we need to do is to prevent fistula from happening, which I would call closing the tap. We need to close the tap to prevent more fistula happening, but you need to mop the floor and ensure that those backlogs of fistula cases that are there are dealt with unresolved. So to me, an effective response would therefore look at closing the tap and mopping the floor, meaning we need to prevent, we need to repair, but we also need to reintegrate those who have had the repair done. In 2012, three fistula surgeons from Arua, Kabale, and Soroti Regional Referral Hospitals were trained in advanced fistula care in Ethiopia. The country now has about 45 fistula surgeons distributed across the country, as well as nurses and anesthetists who make up the repair team. When the campaign to eradicate fistula kicked in uh, in 2003, 
uh, by UNFPA and in Gender Health, uh, coordinated by the Ministry of Health, we began having more formalized uh, trainings. People had prescribed trainings they had to do in the country. People traveled to other countries to have trainings. And because of this effort, we now have a big breed of young Ugandan doctors who have had training uh, in fistula surgery and are now basically replacing the, the, the mission doctors who, have been, who had been doing the work in the 80s and the 90s. In Soroti district, hundreds of women have benefited from skills learned at Terawote, a local civil society NGO that has been operating in the Teso sub-region for more than 10 years. It was by choice that we decided to focus efforts and energies in the Teso sub-region. And, um, and, and with, we wanted to intensify the campaign against of just fistula. We wanted everyone at the household level to know about fistula and to be familiar with fistula and not to run away from the patients who are suffering from fistula. Terewode works to reintegrate women after fistula repair. The women are encouraged to form or join income-generating cooperatives, commonly called SACOs, set up to help treated fistula patients. Josephine Añero, a fistula survivor and a member of the Atero Drama Group, has benefited from such a scheme. Using her savings and catering skills she gained during her training, Josephine set up a small food kiosk in the central town of Abaerera in Amuria district. Over time, Josephine has gained the financial muscles to borrow money from her savings scheme to add on to her savings and construct this building in Abaerera town, which will house her business and accommodate her family. Although stigma remains one of the biggest challenges to fistula survivors, many women have gone on to exhibit resilience and courage to stand against fistula. Some women have gone on to have children after surgical repair to demystify myths and traditions about the condition. <laughs> Because so many women with fistula remain marginalized and out of sight, many policy makers and even some health providers fail to recognize the scope and severity of the tragedy. If we can educate the girl child, we try to empower women economically, then, and then, of course, those who are concerned work on the infrastructure, the road network, the transport system, the hospitals, the health center fours, and the health center threes, uh, equip them, staff them, so that if this woman walks for 10 miles and reaches the health center, she will find the doctor there, who will diagnose obstruct obstructed labor and give her a cesarean section. That will definitely eliminate it. And of course, like we're now beginning to talk about early marriages. In the past, it was looked as, at as normal, but now we know it is abnormal. That's already a fight uh, to, to try and dent the, the causative factors, the predisposing factors to fistula. Although major gaps continue to exist, especially in the access to maternal health and treatment, Uganda continues to make strides of progress in the journey to fulfill the desires and aspirations of her people. But as experience has shown, government cannot work in isolation as it attempts to fulfill these rights, more so the women. There is need to continue strengthening her systems so that it's more capable of delivering policies and services that benefit and safeguard the right of women, but more importantly, to support efforts to end the shame, to end the isolation, and to end fistula. Pregnancy childbirth is a gift and should be a celebration for the mother, for the newborn, for the husband, for the family, for the community. You've seen 
in such situation that sometimes it lose the mothers. A contradiction that in the process of giving life, they're taking away another life. We'd like to change that contradiction. We'd like to have birth as a celebration for everyone. And therefore it takes everyone to play their role in making every pregnancy and every birth wanted. And every pregnancy and every birth safe. And the means to enable you to do that, reach out to your nearest provider to make sure that every pregnancy you want is wanted. Family planning can help you. Two, make sure that every delivery or childbirth is safe. And therefore make sure that you are able to attend all your related antenatal and delivery care. And please deliver with a skilled provider. Preferably within a health facility setting. And then thirdly, that fistula can be prevented through these two and other options. But in case you have a fistula, don't shy away. There are services available now, at least in the regional referral hospitals. Reach out, support each other to reach out and to be able to get these services. Kakati zen sanyukanyu, webigam.